Welcome back to the After Hours Podcast. This is me, your host, Daniel, joined with Joey Prohaska. And today we have on the show Tom Van Wiegen, co-owner and operator of the Handlebar Toledo. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you guys? Pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> good. Joey's, doing... Joey's on a fast right now, so he's currently <laughs> dying. <laughs> no, I'm all good. I'm ready to go, man. We're ready to go. He seems ready to rock. <laughs> Can you tell a little bit about Handlebar Toledo? So like... What is the experience of Handlebar Toledo? Yeah. So the Handlebar Toledo is a party bike that offers two-hour-long tours of downtown Toledo. Um, that can mean really whatever it is that a customer wants it to mean as far as those two hours. But typically, the way we structure it is we'll spend about 20 minutes on board pedaling at a time, 15, 20 minutes at a bar stop. 20 minutes on board pedaling, 15, 20 minutes at a bar stop, coffee stop. Picture stop, pizza stop, whatever people want. Over that two hours, you'll spend a little more than half of it probably on board the bike, pedaling through town, a little less than half, you know, stretching your legs, using the restroom, uh, taking advantage of drink specials at bars. We work with, you know, as many bars downtown as we can to uh, set up drink specials for our customers. You know, it's it's just a way for us to kind of focus our crazy group of 16 people on one thing when they go into the bar. So, you know, not only does it, does it give the customers a great experience because they get, you know, maybe a $2 domestic beer, $3 shot, you know, $2 seltzer at some places, you know, they can take advantage of those drink specials, but it also makes it so the bartender isn't overwhelmed with 16 different orders. It's like, all right, five White Claws, three Miller Lights, three shots of Jameson, let's go. Then it takes 10 minutes to get, and then you're like... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so it's, it's just easier if you kind of focus them on one thing and then keep it moving. Of course, you know, if you, if you want to get a Manhattan at Manhattan's... Yep. You're welcome to do so, and they'll happily make you one. <laughs> um, but most of the time, you know, our groups are just looking to hang out and have a good time. Mm-hmm. Yep. So the other cool thing too is it kind of gives uh, people a chance to kind of sample a little bit of Toledo because Toledo, maybe 20 years ago, wouldn't have had nearly as many bars. But like the amount of like bars and establishments you can go to now is just crazy. Oh yeah, and not just the amount of bars, but the distinct different neighborhoods and vibes. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're hanging out on Adams Street near the Attic or Manhattan's, George's, Wesley's, um, Carlos Poco Loco, it's a different vibe entirely than if you're, you know, at, you know, Dirty Bird or Bronze Boar or Cock and Bull or, yep. you know, Warehouse District areas. Or if you want to check out a different vibe entirely, we can go across the river over to, you know, Old Bag of Nails, Hamburger Mary's. Yep. Um, we can go up into the Vistula neighborhood. Go to Toledo Spirits. Mm-hmm. There's a lot to explore in our city of Toledo, especially in our downtown. And we that's what we do. I, uh, both times I've been on, I've went to Adam Street first and then went to like the warehouse downtown district after that. And all good times. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, um, that's definitely one of the ways that we do it. Yeah. Um, we always like to hit up multiple neighborhoods, mm-hmm. you know. I didn't even mention like the kind of more central business district of, you know, spots like downtown Johnny's kind of by the Huntington Center, mm-hmm. um, the Heights are yep. considering that same kind of district. So yep. Bobcat Bonnie's is going to be opening up yep. this summer downtown, which is very exciting. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I spent several years living in Detroit or the Detroit area and Bobcat Bonnie's in Corktown. So much fun. I think that's got big potential for downtown. And now that we're outside of kind of the COVID restriction life, um, (laughs) we have some big things happening in Toledo this year. Uh, Downtown's ready to kind of pick back up where it left off. Hopefully beyond where it left off. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of new good construction in downtown and kind of within that whole area. I know there's like the 60 something apartment buildings going right down the street, like right past the Heights. Um, yep. Yep. So yep. There's that, and then there's a few other like that whole main row is getting redone. Hopefully they'll be done with that soon. I know, right? <laughs> the construction is frustrating, especially for a business like ours that yeah. you know we're on the streets, you know, all the time, and it's tough when 
you know, we have a staff of 20 drivers yeah. that drive tours, communicating all that information and making sure, you know, because some drivers are working maybe one Saturday in May and then they're not working again until like late June. And downtown's totally changed since then. So it's yep. just, it's kind of wild to, to keep uh, up to date with it, but you'll never hear me complain about it because it's good things for downtown. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, yeah. it, it, is it a pain for us to deal with? Sure. But as long as we can get around it and get you to wherever you want to go, that life's sure. good. Yeah. Nice. For sure. And then hopefully uh coins and tempered will be up and running sometime this year. Third new tap room and uh, beer garden. Is that the one on, that's going to be on Jackson street? <laughs> is that a, uh, yep. 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 They're okay. doing a, a tap room and a beer garden and a few other things. That's a super cool area. Yep. Um, that's got a lot of potential. The, mm-hmm. That area along with kind of over near the farmer's market are kind of areas that are really close to downtown neighborhoods that have already, you know, started to thrive and are just waiting to take off too, I think. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I don't know those guys yet. Um, I I think I saw that you guys had talked to them, but I didn't listen to that one yet. Yeah, they're they're great guys. We work with them on a few projects Mm -hmm. and uh, they're super excited. There's would they have about a four four person team. Um, right okay. now, and they all they all do their own separate thing within the within the bar. But they've been brewing for about for f- yeah five or so years at least now. Wow! Mm-hmm. So my yeah. favorite part about them, I mean, the beer is you know good. But yeah. outside of that, <laughs> uh, they have really cool like can art. It's like really oh, different. sick. Yeah. Yeah. But, okay. Yeah, definitely something to look out for for sure. Yeah, that's one of my favorite thing about craft beer is just the different cans and the different names. It's mm-hmm. just makes it all interesting it does so what's your role in the business and um what was your background before that yeah so with the handlebar toledo um i'm the co-owner and operator so what that means is i have two business partners um my friend steven his brother brian i'm the majority owner of the handlebar toledo but i partnered with those guys at the start of things because one i worked for brian up at the handlebar detroit Okay. The year prior to starting the Handlebar Toledo. Two, Stephen and I were great friends in college. Mm-hmm. You know, I followed when they started, he and Brian started the Handlebar originally in Indianapolis. They then expanded it to Detroit as well. Eventually, I got involved, uh, like I said, that year in early 2016 in Detroit and started talking with them about bringing it to Toledo. Okay. Um, so we formed a different entirely business here called the Handlebar Toledo. Okay, so they're, do they still work with or do they still own the one in Indianapolis and uh, Detroit then? Yeah, so Stephen basically operates the Indianapolis location and Brian operates the Detroit location. Okay. I handle the Toledo location. Nice. Um, so we work together on all sorts of different things throughout the course of the the year and over the years. So do you guys ever uh, drive the handlebar or <laughs> that, I just got to know cause it's like, I drive it all the time. Okay. I, okay. I love driving tours. It's okay. like, it's how I got involved yep. with the handlebar. It's what I've always loved about it. You know, I've, I've joined for tours before. Like obviously it's a total blast, but yep. you know, what I'm passionate about is providing cool experiences for people. Mm. Um, and there's no better way to do that than on a giant mobile bicycle bar. (laughs) Um, so that's been super fun. In 2020, I probably drove more tours than I would have wanted to because we got so thin with staff, Mm -hmm. you know, understandably so, Mm -hmm. um, that like I had to drive tours every single Saturday while managing the company. And that's really challenging to do. You know, you, over the course of a Saturday, you might have. 12 to 16 tours going. And if you're driving four of them yourself, it's tough to handle any of the other issues that are going on. Right. Other than Saturdays, I absolutely love driving tours. <laughs> like yeah. Saturdays, I try to kind of keep myself off the schedule. So Saturdays are probably pretty packed downtown. Never they are. Ever. They are. So <laughs> yeah. it's, it's just so I can help with things throughout the course of the day. So and what kind of sparked up the idea to start up the handlebar? I can, you know, kind of talk as far as Stephen and Brian go for, their first concept of it Mm -hmm. you know they saw it somewhere they talked to each other about it and they said why not you know that's kind of how it started 
you know, I got involved in it because I had gotten, I went down this whole other career path. It was great. I did well, but it wasn't like what I love to do. Mm -hmm. And eventually I kind of came to the conclusion that, you know, I need to take a pause from this career and see if there's something else. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't know what that something else was. I had enough money in the bank to make it about a year, (laughs) you know, (laughs) and I quit And, you know, I had to kind of go through that process of reevaluating, you know, what's important to me and what I want to do, you know, with life. So I ended up working part time for the Handlebar Detroit and just loved it. The the one in Detroit is super fun. (laughs) I remember the place, the, the shipping container. So that didn't even exist when I worked okay. for that for okay, the, really? for the handlebar to trade. Yeah. So like 2016 is when I got involved and Detroit was like a whole different city then. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, you know, it's a total blast now. It was a total blast then, but it was wild back then. It was like, you know, pedal pubs weren't really a thing in the region. Like we were just dropping these handlebar bikes downtown <laughs> Detroit and just partying on them. Yeah. And, uh, it was you know, nobody had ever seen anything like it. And so it was a lot of fun. (laughs) So is is the handlebar like a franchise or is it like specific to these three, like Toledo, Indianapolis, Detroit, or how does that work? That's right. So Brian and Steven own the handlebar LLC, which is a separate company entirely than the handlebar Toledo. They're partners of mine in the handlebar Toledo is kind of how it's structured. So the wild thing about it is Steven uh, partnered with a friend of his from Australia to start up a handlebar over in Australia. Wow! As well, so there's just pretty cool. Technically so there's, four there's locations. Four handlebar locations. What in uh, where in Australia? A uh, town called Adelaide. Um, okay. I think it's on the South Shore. It looks amazing. I mean, I've just seen like videos of handlebar tours there. That look like a total blast. And and uh, when when did he start that up? It was about the same time as we were getting the handlebar Toledo going. Okay. Um, I don't know the exact dates or which one came first, but I think they were both in 2016. Nice. Hanna-Bar Toledo, September 2016. Okay. I remember that. <laughs> and uh, and how many how many handlebars do you guys have now? Like how many? How many bikes? Yeah, how many bikes? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, in Toledo, we have four bikes. Okay. So in Toledo, we have two bikes that we call them the OG bikes. They're 100% pedal. They're the first two bikes we ever bought. And then we have two other bikes that look exa- the same, work the same, but they have these, I call them like smart motors on them. Oh. Um, so we call them like electric assist bikes or boosted bikes. And those bikes help customers with the pedaling, basically. They're super useful for like getting up hills. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hills are tough. <laughs> but the, you know, the 100% pedal bikes, the OG bikes... Those move really well and really easily Mm -hmm. as long as you're on relatively flat land. Yeah. Like, it's tough to go if, you know, you guys are familiar with downtown from... You guys are located on St. Clair, right? um, No, we're actually on Ontario Street is where we're at. Yeah. Um, But if you go up, I think it's Ottawa Street over by Owens Corning Mm -hmm. over towards uh, Mommy Bay Brewing from downtown, there's a hill there. And that mm-hmm. hill made it impossible for the first two years we were in business to ever go to Mommy Bay Brewing, mm-hmm. with the exception of there was a group of like walleye hockey players that <laughs> once they had no problem crushing that hill, right? And then <laughs> so, like a group of marathon runners, like oh. basically like a running club in Toledo. Turned into a challenge. So yeah, like I, you know those those kind of groups is like if you guys want to do it, we can. You know, I think we can do it. But, <laughs> To the, to the groups that are looking to just go out and have a good time. It's like, eh, if you want to go to Mommy Bro- Bay, book the, uh, book electric, the one. electric Assist. Yeah. yeah, I was actually on one about three weeks ago for one of my um, friend's birthdays. And oh, sick. I was like, I, I'm not really pedaling much. It doesn't look like anybody else is, is either. So I'm like, how, how are these things going? So I'm, I'm glad you answered that question. Yeah, <laughs> so you must have had an electric assist button. Oh, yeah, yeah. definitely. So they take, they take feedback from the pedaling, and they'll adjust how much, basically, power they're putting into the motor mm-hmm. to keep the bike going at, like, three or four miles an hour. Okay. So once you get that thing going, you do need to pedal, though, to get it started. If nobody pedals and at like a dead stop from a light, like 
it doesn't really go anywhere. So you gotta you gotta pedal a little bit to get it going. Gotta get past so. that coefficient of friction. Exactly, right? exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of inertia to battle to get it going, and then once you're going, keeps it moving. So, so there's two of each. Do you ever street race? Um, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, it's a total blast when customers book multiple bikes for a tour. Um, we've had you know, a single customer book out all four bikes and throw a 64 person party. You know, there are roads downtown that are like one way with multiple lanes with no traffic. (laughs) And it's like, all right, sweet. Let's, let's go. And you just pedal as fast as you can. So what's what's like the fastest they can go or what's the fastest you've seen? The funny story about that. um, (laughs) This was back before I was even involved with the handlebar. Uh, Steven and Brian, all three of us are mechanical engineers by uh, schooling, mm. and we've all worked in the automotive industry at different times. Brian, at the time, I think used some contacts that he had from Toyota and talked with Car and Driver about getting our bikes out and testing them. So, like, you know how Car and Driver puts on, like, their, like... Their, like, specs. And yeah, they specs. put on specs, yeah. exactly. If you Google handlebar Car and Driver... Um, it'll come up with a whole like article of them taking out a handlebar bike and testing it. Like they did, uh, they did a top speed test and with 10 and Google it now. Yeah. With 10 engineers, with 10 engineers pedaling, they got it going 12 miles per hour on flatland. So that's what we tell people top speed is. I think that's about right. Well, 10 engineers may be different than, like, <laughs> yeah. may be different than 10 like hockey, play, hockey right. players You're or right. 10 marathon runners. You're right. But uh, it's still probably like 14, 15. But yeah, It exactly. seems like you're going a little faster when you're on it. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's a totally unique experience to be sitting at a bar pedaling and also cruising through the city. So, yeah, it's... You know, it's tough to get a gauge for how fast you're going when you're on a tour because you're just like, wow, this is different than anything I've ever done. Mm-hmm. So, fuel and so, economy, 15 miles per gallon. <laughs> <laughs> it says, and then it says an asterisk, and then it says beer. <laughs> 15 <laughs> beers per gallon. Yeah, uh, that's about right. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so, did you guys like make the bikes yourself or did you buy them? No, yeah. So, the bikes are the original pedal pub bike they're from the netherlands so back in i think the year was 1997 these two guys brothers in the netherlands hankins veer van laar one of them's a engineer one was a welder they had a buddy who had a bar that wanted to put together a float for the queen's day parade in amsterdam like it's a big deal so they got like high budgets for these floats Mm -hmm. and he wanted to make a bar that people could bike while they're sitting at it um, to take it like through the parade. And so the initial design wasn't exactly what we have, but you know, similar. And over the years that iterated and they started making these and selling them to, you know, distributors and countries all over the world. Mm-hmm. Um, so the company that builds our bikes is actually called Het Fiets Cafe. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that at all right. Yeah. It's Dutch word Het is the. Fiat's is bicycle and cafe is like bar or cafe. Okay. Uh, they're the manufacturer. I think, you know, they've at this point probably made thousands yep. um, worldwide, but like in the low thousands, you know, there's not that many cities worldwide that have them and not that many bikes in each city. I think I was looking, it said 68 cities maybe. Does that sound the, right? Worldwide or in the U.S.? I think it said in the U.S. Yeah, I think in the U.S. that's right. Okay. Um, probably a few less after 2020. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that'll pick back up. Oh, no mm-hmm. doubt. So, what's like the the ideal route that you would take? Oh, good question. Well, I'll start off by saying there's literally infinite routes that you could possibly do downtown. <laughs> um, the only thing that'll stop you is how much you're willing to pedal. <laughs> but if I was doing a handlebar tour, I would start off with a cruise down Adams Street. Um, I'd probably stop, get a photo uh, along a mural along the way. Um, you got a bunch to choose from down there. Then either stop probably at Manhattan's or the attic, depending on kind of the vibe and um, the group what we're doing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Then from there, I'd take off, probably head towards a spot like Cock and Bull or the Bronze Boar. 
I love both those bars. Both those bars have great specials for us and are fun times, like all the time. Live music. <clears throat> Bronze Boar is like a cool, like loud mm-hmm. bar. Or sorry, Cock and Bull is. Um, and then Bronze Boar can also be that inside, but also it's got really an awesome kind of beer garden in the back and patio. Yeah. And then let's see. I'd probably hop back on the bike, go for a cruise maybe through the farmer's market part of town. Mm-hmm. Then probably stop at either Table 44 or Chevy's Place, one of those two. Um, those are, especially by the kind of third stop along the tour. Um, if you're a customer, you're having a great time, and both those bars are, like, going to turn up the great time. Yeah, it um, seems like Chevy's and Table 44, every time you go to them nowadays, like, Table 44 has a line, <laughs> like, half a mile long. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they both do a great job and have, you know, kind of party atmospheres inside. Yep. And <clears throat> Chevy's place is funny. On the rare occasion that we show up and it's dead, mm-hmm. like, as soon as they see us, they're like cranking up the music. They're like <laughs> turning it into a party inside. Yeah. Like so, the bars downtown are are fun. They work with us. Mm-hmm. They understand that you know if they can give a, you know a lot of our customers aren't necessarily downtown people mm-hmm. or people that know downtown that well. Um, a lot of them maybe have only gone to a Mud Hens game downtown or a Walleye game or gone to a concert downtown. Mm-hmm. Um, and haven't explored kind of the areas outside of those specific places they go. Every time we stop somewhere, you know, it's an opportunity for a customer to check out a new bar and a bar to make an impression on a customer. So do you get like out of town people or is it just people who like maybe they're at doing a bachelor party, bachelorette party? So both, definitely. Um, You know, there's one day I got DM from a person from like Boston and they were like, hey, I'm coming to Toledo for a wedding this weekend. Can you get me and like 10 of us from the wedding on a bike tonight? And that we're coming in from the East Coast and check the schedule. Yeah, let's get you on board. Um, so you'll have people coming to Toledo for whatever reason that want to explore Toledo. See what we got going here. Um, and they, you know, they have a blast on the handlebar doing that. And then thing I love about Toledo is there's a lot of local pride here. Like we, if, if you're a Toledo person, like you wear that badge with honor and you might talk a little bit of shit about Toledo, but you're not like anybody else. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Any, anybody from out of town, like, you know, we'll, we'll make jokes about it, but uh, it's like you would do like your brother or your family member. Right. It's like out of love. So that's a good analogy. Yeah. yeah. It's uh <laughs> You know, we love this city of Toledo that we live in, and it's fun to be able to show it off, you know, through this company. So so what's the most interesting thing that you've ever seen happen on a handlebar? Whether that be in oh Detroit, boy. Toledo, wherever. Oh, boy. <laughs> there was, you know, first of all, I'll say what happens on the handlebar stays on the handlebar. Second of all. <laughs> minus, <laughs> minus this part, right? Yeah, second of all. <laughs> No, uh, this story is a fun one. It was a group from some town within about an hour, like a, a small farming town. Okay. And there were 12 people in the group. You know, it's kind of starting off and starting to figure out that like a lot of them are siblings. And it, the, it was a 21st birthday party. And some of them were quite a bit older. And you know, by the time we get to the second bar stop, they tell me we're all siblings. This is our baby sister's 21st birthday. Oh, okay. So having like 12 li- like siblings from the same family, just, I mean, by the end of the tour, I felt a little bit bad for the 21-year-old <laughs> because she had uh, a total blast, but maybe her siblings were being bad influences, at least a few of them. Yep. Um, and she would maybe felt better than when uh, she started, but um, it, was, it was a lot of fun. And to be a part of experiences like that... Mm-hmm all the time is kind of my favorite thing about it. Um, But we, we've done thousands of tours to pick out like one or two things. is kind of hard Mm because I can think of hundreds of bachelorette parties, hundreds of birthday parties, hundreds of retirement parties, and they all kind of mash together (laughs) once you've done a bunch of them. Um, You know, you can, you talk to my 
a lot of my staff, they'll do like four or five tours on a Saturday. Like right when you get done with it, you're just like, wow, that was, that all kind of merged together. Like, <laughs> you know, cause you're just out on the bike having a blast with people. Mm-hmm. Did you say earlier that you had the walleyes on yeah, it was an unofficial thing. So, um, it was, uh, I think it was one of the wives of one of the players got it together, just like, uh, you know, friends thing to do with, uh, with some of the walleye wives and girlfriends and some of the players came on board, of course. And it was hilarious how fast we were cruising through the town. <laughs> I mean, really? hockey legs are a real thing. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, no so, you know, groups like that are a lot of fun too, where you're kind of, as the driver, you control the brake at all times. So you absolutely can slow things down, but it's kind of fun to be like, all right, let's see how these guys, how fast these guys can take it, you know? Right. And so we have, we have a lot of fun with, I guess the diversity of groups that we get. And, mm-hmm. you know, not only is it a bunch of different occasions, but, it's old people, young people, black people, white people. Everybody likes to get out and see downtown and have fun downtown. Yep. You know, we've had groups of 75-year-old women, all of them, <laughs> on the 100% pedal bike, um, crushing hills. <laughs> and, telling me, and telling me that people who complain are, you know... Soft or something. Soft. <laughs> wussies, uh, yeah. for lack of what they did say. But, um, yeah, uh, just... You, you get to meet a lot of really cool people when you're out driving tours, which is one of my favorite things, too. Mm-hmm. Have you noticed, like, a common theme? Like, this is, like, really generalizing, because I'm sure <laughs> everyone has different tastes of what, like, they drink. But have you noticed, like, a common theme as to, like, what's, like, the go-to thing that everyone goes to drink? Oh, it definitely transitioned from, like, 2016, 2017 being... White Claw. Yeah, no, like still then it was like light beers, yeah, like Bud yeah. Lights, Miller Lights, whatever. And now it's just Seltzer City on Seltzer. board. I mean, everybody brings Seltzers. Yep. And it's, I understand why. Like, if you're doing something active, they taste just like water. Yeah. Like, it's perfect for it. Um, gotta stay hydrated. You stay hydrated <laughs> with them for sure. <laughs> Most of them are pretty good. I've tried a few that are not so good, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, Celsius are by <laughs> by and large the most uh, common thing that people bring. That makes so, sense. Yeah, I mean, what did you guys? What did you bring? Um, I brought Miller Lite. Oh, <laughs> all good. the girls brought uh, White Claws. White Claws, so, yeah. Four of each, of course. Of course, of course, <laughs> of course. So yeah, there's a few um, restrictions as far as what you can bring on board these things in yep. the state of Ohio. Mm-hmm. So there's a limited quantity that people can bring. Really, it's how much you can have on board the bike at any time. Oh, yeah. Because the state doesn't want like the temptation of us selling beer. Like yeah. you know, load up the bike with 400 beers. Like you know. I don't know if people are going to start selling them or <laughs> handing them out or whatever. Yeah. So bring a responsible amount of beer. Don't worry. We'll stop at bar stops and get other drinks if you right. really want. You know, like I said, we got shot specials, drink specials. Um, yep. But you can't bring uh, glass containers either for obvious reasons. Which makes sense. Right? I mean, that just sounds, it just sounds not Yeah, good. just <laughs> don't bring, you know, even if it's Bud Light bottles, like, just don't bring those. Get the cans. It's like being on a boat. Like, just yeah. cans are way better. Um, you can't bring kegs um, <laughs> for the same reason. Has as anybody ever tried thing. to bring a keg? No. no. <laughs> but they've, they've asked about it while yeah. being on board. Like, yeah. next time can we bring one? It's like, no, guys, it's a terrible idea. It's not going to work anyway. Um, cause it's so bumpy on yeah. the bike. I mean, it's just, if you've ever dealt with kegs, like as soon as you start shaking them up, it's a disaster. Yeah. So 90% foam. Yeah. <laughs> so cans are the way to go anyway. Yeah. And you know, you can't bring like a bottle of Jack Daniels on board, <laughs> you know, for the, for the glass containers reason. Mm-hmm. And you just can't bring like hard liquor on board. Yeah. We get a fair amount of customers who don't drink anything but hard liquor anyway. You know, what we do in that case is I'm like, well, bring some waters on board the bike. We'll stop at bars. You can always get a to-go cup in downtown Toledo. Mm -hmm. You can bring that on board our bike. So if you want to get, you know, if you're somebody who only drinks Jameson and ginger or whatever, like, sure, get your Jameson and ginger, bring it on board the bike in a Dora cup in the legal way that we can do it, you know? So 
Yeah, there's legislation around like how we can operate these things. Yeah. That the state of Ohio passed in 2016, mm -hmm. which is why, you know, we saw the opportunity to bring it to Toledo then. And I'm sure most so. of it's for safety reasons. So. Absolutely. I mean, it's, I don't disagree with, you know, it's like, yeah, let's have some common sense rules on the books about this stuff, right? Yeah. So. And you're stopping to have, what, five bars? I mean, four, four, four <laughs> drinks plus five bars. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you stopped at five bars? I think so. Four oh, five. my gosh. Well, two Usually of we do two to three. Okay. So your group was on the expedited uh, <laughs> yeah. tour that day. That's hilarious. Yeah, we, we had these, um, I remember, I can't remember the names. They were both blonde. One of them had, okay. had been there a while. One of them was brand new at the okay, time. Okay, cool. Like first drive. Yep. Um, can't remember the names. They were great. Uh, I, it was probably Emma and Lydia or Emma and Michaela. I think Emma and Lydia. Emma and Lydia. Yep. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, right on. Yeah, they're both great. Yeah, um, they, they were a good time. Yeah, we've got... Like I said, now we have about 20 drivers on staff mm -hmm. and, you know, I look for people that are responsible and I can trust, obviously, but I also look for people that like, I would want to hang out with anyway, like yeah. that I think people in general are drawn to, mm -hmm. um, because over the course of the two hours, the person who's driving your tour is kind of like an addition to your party. Yeah. Right. Um, and you know, that person is like the sober monitor to your party. Right. Yeah. Um, they're, you know, keeping you guys safe. They're keeping you guys on time. They're leading the fun. Um, and so I look for people that I like to have fun with. Yeah. So that's kind of how we do it. Yeah. It definitely helps when your driver is like kind of having fun with you while keeping you safe. And yes. Really <laughs> the, good, the good sober one there. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So what's the rule on music at the handlebar? Oh, great question. Music. Yes. Music, it's bring your own bar is what we say. So that includes music. Like what bar are you at where you're having fun where there's not music? Or what party are you at that you're having fun that there's not music? Yeah. So what we recommend that customers do is just put together a playlist on Spotify, iTunes, whatever it is you use, um, your old iPod, <laughs> like if you want to kick it old school, whatever. And we can hook up any of those devices directly to our stereo. Mm -hmm. You know, you know better than anybody if it's your group, what kind of music that you guys are going to like. Mm -hmm. So that's probably my number one tip as well for like, you want your handlebar party to be just a, as much fun as possible. Get a playlist full of stuff that people like mm -hmm. that people are going to enjoy, you know, listening to as they're cruising downtown and pedaling to um, whatever that is for you. Like you guys want to listen to jazz. I don't care if that's what get you gets you hype. You know, <laughs> that's what we can do. Have you yeah, had so. a group before? Oh, yeah. Nice. We've had a group that was literally like announcing architecture as we went by. Like there was a group of architecture <laughs> like folks. We gave them a microphone and they're just talking architecture. That's like, awesome. Whatever it is that gets you and your group like excited and having fun, let's do that. So I'm sure you got a lot of the jazz in Detroit, too. Oh, Detroit was <laughs> wild. I mean, we could literally stop at jazz bars in Detroit. Yep. I mean... Uh, Detroit is is uh, a fun beast for the, for doing handlebar tours as well. So is Indianapolis, um, and obviously Toledo is too. Um, but I'm a bit more biased about Toledo, probably. Toledo's <laughs> <laughs> pretty sweet. So, Toledo's sick. So is the handlebar seasonal or is it like all year round? Um, good question. I'd say our busy season is like May through September. Our kind of official handlebar season is St. Patrick's Day through the end of the year, though. Okay. Um, so, like, we always kick it off St. Patrick's Day. There's, at least before COVID, the Shamrock and Shuffle um, is a big event downtown at St. Patrick's Day time that we always kind of use as our kickoff party, too. Um, it's a 5K at night, and we'll literally, like, load up a bunch of customers on board the bike for the 5k um it's super fun we work with the shamrock and shuffle on it um and like bartend afterwards at you know at the beer tent it's mm -hmm. super fun um so anyway we go through all the way through christmas really we'll do handlebar tours all the way through christmas people have done handlebar tours every month except january in toledo okay so we've done february tours 
we've done March tours. We've done a fair amount of November and December tours. Um, another thing we've added recently is this holiday trolley experience <laughs> um, on board like an old fashioned trolley. We've got a, a partner company that works with us on that. Okay. And are they Toledo based? Um, they're just over the border in Michigan. Is it Tecumseh Trolley? Yeah, you know oh, it. Yeah, Steve you know Pixley. Them? Yeah. Yeah, he grew up uh, right next to my family's farm. Really? Uh, one, two houses down. Yeah, so yep. I work with Steve and with um, uh, his wife as well. Yep, um, they're awesome. Yeah. Super <laughs> I've cool known people. him since I was three or four years old. Oh, that's hilarious. Yep. Um, so, yeah, so we partnered with them to do a similar concept to the handlebar on these old fashioned trolleys yep. during specific weekends of the year. We do like four weekends a year, um, between Thanksgiving and Christmas. And it's just like the most fun, ugly sweater party <laughs> I've ever been a part of. Like, it's just super festive. We listen to like all the banger Christmas songs, like all the holiday songs that are just fun. We see the city, we go by like, the Christmas lights. Like, I don't know if when you guys were kids, like your parents would take you out to like, look at the lights and stuff. Mm, yep. It's that, but on a trolley, like how much fun is that? With beer. With beer. <laughs> and it stops to get more beer if you want. Yep. So yeah, that's one of my favorite times of the year. Mm. That was one of the things that stunk the most about COVID was, I mean, obviously it was, it was tough to get shut down the first time and go through the whole summer of kind of not knowing what's, you know, what's going on and really being in the heat of a pandemic, Mm -hmm. you know, and all the challenges that come with that. And then, you know, things looked pretty good for a while in July, August, September, you know, hospital cases were low, seemed like maybe we were through that COVID thing. Mm -hmm. And then it came roaring back in the fall. And as a result, we had to shut down again and we had to shut down all the trolley tours Mm -hmm. Um, so that was a bummer (laughs) cause like it's my favorite thing about Christmas is the trolley so I mean (laughs) uh, I have a lot of favorite things about Christmas and the holidays but that's always a highlight yeah the trolley (laughs) is definitely a highlight it's a fun thing that we get to do so it it definitely seems like that was the time everyone was getting COVID was like during Christmas basically oh yeah um yeah (laughs) Thanksgiving too right before Thanksgiving (laughs) for sure I mean so I got COVID like in April, 2020. Yep. And for me, that just meant I was like really tired and I lost taste mm-hmm. and it was right at the start of the pandemic. So it was also pretty nerve wracking because mm-hmm. you're like, okay, this feels like nothing that's ever touched me before. Mm-hmm. Oh, and the hospitals are kind of overwhelmed. So by the way, don't get sick. <laughs> and so, mm-hmm. you know, but it, I was lucky as far as it wasn't bad. Mm-hmm. December 2020 hits, I was at an, a group outing that maybe was on the riskier side. My girlfriend got it. And so I quarantined with her then again for two weeks. Um, but thankfully, I didn't get it then. And now I'm vaccinated and everything's good. So Yeah, a lot of uh, our group, about half of us, we all, you know, work together, live together. Yeah. Well, a few, few of us live together. Um, but we're all always around each other at least. Yeah. And like half of our group got it like three weeks before Thanksgiving. It was going Nothing. around big time. That was like the start of that second. I think it was surge. right after like Halloween. A lot of yep. people went out and yep. um, that just started it, I guess. It did. It did. It was not fun to deal with yep. for anybody. <laughs> it, it seems like uh, like fall would be a great time to go on the handlebar though. You got kind of the cool oh, weather. For sure. Get a few drinks in you, you know. For sure. <laughs> you can get some of those Oktoberfest style beers. Yep. Um, Blitzens are always nice too. Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> that was the Uber Blitzen. It's like, yep. why? Why did you do that to me? Like, the Blitzen was, was strong enough. Yep. Um, but that's, but that's a cool thing that downtown does too, you know. There's always like the Blitzen, uh, you know, celebration and the start of Christmas and get horses on, you know, kitten carriages downtown and stuff. And, oh, it's exciting that it, all that stuff's coming back. Oh, yeah, I'm looking forward <laughs> so. to it. Um, yeah, for sure. I was just about to talk about UC football. I don't know why, but <laughs> it's cool. Because of the hat. I like UC hat, football. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, because uh, they're uh, they're doing the full like full stadium. It's How fun is that so going to be? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, Completely unrelated to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. It's uh, 
for lack of a better term or way to put it, I can't wait for people to be like sweating on each other again. You know, like <laughs> it just stunk to not be able to like see each other, to yeah. hug each other, to yeah. breathe on each other. Like, whew, if we if we are actually past it, that's very good news. Yeah, it's a blessing. It's gonna be yeah, it's it's gonna be something that we live through and hopefully never see again as long as we live on this earth. We leave yeah, exactly. <laughs> hopefully it's you know, it seems like something that happens every hundred years or so. So yeah. it was our turn. And it sucked. <laughs> yeah, agreed. So So what's one thing you know now that you wish you would have known when you were starting uh the handlebar here in Toledo? That COVID was coming. <laughs> <laughs> um no, it was just a good segue there. Um gosh, that's a good question. I don't know. Now that I now that I made that joke, I don't know. Um, because honestly, I it probably helped having ex- like some of the previous previous experience from yeah. them running the handlebars in Detroit and it absolutely did. It helped having you know business partners who could be mentors on the business side of things. Yeah. Um, not that it wasn't you know challenging, and there were a lot of growing moments, and I screwed plenty of things up along the way. Um, so what's but one, I, yeah, I think it's the way to go. Start your own business, do your own thing. What's one That's tip you would give to somebody who's thinking about starting a business, a handlebar, a regular bar? If it's that thing that is pulling you to do it, do it. You know, if it's, I've, I've done a lot of different things in my life and it's so much easier to excel at something if you're pulled to it. Like if it's something that you want to do. So just ask yourself, is this what I want to do? Is this something that I'm okay with spending a hundred hours a week on if I have to? <laughs> yep. And if the answer is like, yeah, that's, I can't imagine doing anything else then do it. 100%. I think that's kind of one thing me and you share in common. We both, you said you're a mechanical engineer. Yeah. Yeah. So I was mechanical engineer. And then, like, I did my first co-op, and I was like, oh. <laughs> I was, uh... <laughs> you learned a lot faster than me. You're a much quicker yeah. learner. <laughs> I was, uh, I was the AutoCAD guy. I was okay, like, yep. No, 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 no. I had one me. of those, yep. So, like, I switched over to media communication, and now I'm working for a software company, so. Good for you. But, um, yeah, it's, like you said, it's really important, like, regardless of what you're doing, or, like, regardless where you're at, like, if it's something that you know you want to do, go out and do it. Because, yeah. Like just because everyone tells you to do one specific thing, just because that's where all the money is at. I mean, money is good, but you, there's like you have to find like a happy balance between the two. You, know? you do. Like, you need money, but you also need to not be super depressed every day. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You have to like because I've you know I've had jobs where I just don't want to go. Yeah. You know, I'm just like, oh, it's tough to get up and go to this. Like, oh, this is. And that's how a lot of work is, you know, there's a reason they call it work. But if you can just figure out something where you don't feel that way, it's so worth the whatever risk you have to take to get there, whatever, you know, pay cut you might have to take to get there, whatever Mm -hmm. of your own money you might have to take to get there. If you can get there, that feeling is fantastic. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. so this may be a hard question then. If you weren't operating the handlebar, what do you think you would be doing? Maybe something with dogs. I also love dogs. So yep. um, I, I'm i big into riding bikes. I'm big into walking dogs. Like, yeah. I love my dog. Um, I'll go for a dog walk with anybody at any time. I'll go to the dog park anytime. Yep. Um, so I, you know, I have thought about... Like doggy daycare type stuff Mm -hmm. and, you know, boarding and training and all that. But like dogs are just, they're a vibe. Like they're so much fun. Uh (laughs) Like they're, all they want to do is play. Like it's cool to hang out with dogs because they like, yeah, well then they like, they, my dog reminds me every day to take some time and just play. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like. Do something you want to do. Mm-hmm. We'll go in the backyard, throw the ball around, play. We'll go to the dog park, play. Yeah. So, something with dogs, I guess. <laughs> I think I got it. A yeah. dog, like a doggy daycare slash bar. 
Come oh, on. I love it. I love that <laughs> idea so much. And Toledo needs one. <laughs> so I absolutely love it. It makes sense why, you're, uh, why your dog's on this pub to Toledo. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. A poster back here. <laughs> yeah. So the Pubs That's- of Toledo poster, if anybody has it, it has the handlebar Toledo on the poster. And if you look close, there's a dog driving it. That's my dog, Jimmy. And he's a shepherd mix. He's a total mutt. He's a pound puppy and the sweetest dog in the world. So, nice. um, yeah, probably some dogs would be cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you have any adventures that you have planned in the future? And gosh, I don't have like a big adventure on the horizon that I have planned right now. Um, I've been recently, some adventures include like, backpack hike camping trip through Glacier National Forest with my handlebar partners. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We went in late October. That's in Montana. Montana, late October, a backpacking tent hiking trip. Um, We prepared for the cold, but we were not prepared for the cold. (laughs) Um, That's no joke when you have like 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. of no sun at all. And it can be 65 degrees and sunny during the day, but in those mountains out west, it's like 10 degrees at night. Mm -hmm. I was sharing a tent with my buddy who's the Australian one, Mm -hmm. and he, I just vividly remember him shivering next to me, just repeating, it's the coldest I've ever been, mate. (laughs) It's the coldest (laughs) I've ever been. Oh, man. (laughs) So... That's a good memory of, of an adventure anyway that that we survived. But, uh-huh. yeah, I don't have anything on the docket. Do you guys have a recommendation? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing I can say on here. <laughs> uh, that sounds fun. <laughs> uh, um, I haven't vacationed much or anything. Gone on too many crazy adventures since COVID. Yeah, um, right? I just feel like I'm out of the mode of thinking about it. Yeah, my, uh, my more, sister's so. both... <laughs> My sisters both work in uh, Cleveland, so I go and visit there. Oh, Pretty sick! Decent amount. Um, other than that, we went to I think Florida I heard you back. mention that to Zach. Yep. Um, no, I'm thinking about it. Yeah, club yep. there. Bottle service. Yep, Dante. It's called Dante's Inferno's in the in the flats of Cleveland. It sounds like so. a fun adventure. Yeah, it's always a good yeah. time down there. Yeah, everybody's. A lot of fun. It's right on the river. I so love you get the flats. To, yep. Oh, have you been there? Oh, yeah. Have you been to like Forward and mm-hmm. Dante? Okay. Mm-hmm. We were just there. It was my sister's birthday last weekend. So we went to um, Dante's for Friday, Forward during the day and night on Saturday. So, so cool. Long yeah, weekend. <laughs> I, I have never lived in Cleveland, but I've gone and visited several times and okay. bachelor parties there and stuff yep. like that. And that's a fun town. Mm-hmm. It is. It's a yeah. fun town. And that's a fun area of the town, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You just got to know, like, the areas to go to, and you'll have a good time. Yeah. yeah. And it's just, you know, explore within reason. Like, if you're yeah. in an area that doesn't feel right, like, okay, trust your gut. Like, yeah. follow that instinct. Get out of there. Yeah. But, um, I mean, adventure. Go see the city. Talk to bartenders. Talk right. to people who know it and t- or talk to your local handlebar driver or whatever. And you know. but bartenders usually know everybody. I mean, all yeah. the bartenders know each other from every, um, like within the like mile radius of their bar, it seems like they know. So you the like the more urban adventuring is what this, this adventure question is sounding like. I, li- I Checking like the out urban, cities. I do like the urban adventure too. I'm not a huge, like God and camping type of person. Yep. I still do. I'm it. not either. I it's still do out it. of my comfort zone. I hated, I hated those nights. <laughs> okay. I hated them. I, yeah. one night I thought I was going to have a panic attack. I hated it so much. Like really? it's so cold. The only thing near you is bears. <laughs> that, uh, I am terrified of bears. Was, if you have to pee in the middle of the night, you have to start yelling to let the bears know you're coming out to piss. <laughs> like, well, it's a disaster. I don't want any part of that, but yeah, sometimes yeah. you get outside your comfort zone. Speaking of that, I had this girl one time. She's like, oh yeah, hiking so fun, mountains, all that. And then she's like, yeah, but I saw a bear one time and I, like, I'm like, oh yeah, that's yeah, cool, convincing me to go hiking now. No. You know? <laughs> I, you know, I'm old enough where I saw like internet 1.0 yeah. and like, I think I saw a bear attack video and some <laughs> grainy footage and it was like, not trying to do that. No bears in downtown Toledo. I'll no, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's, uh, yeah, we had to carry like bear spray, like yep. 
But of course, we only had one bear spray for four guys. So it's like you had to trust whoever had the bear spray. Is that like bug spray you sprayed on your yeah, Well, no. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> that's funny. Um, no, you. it's like this high powered spray that like shoots 20 feet out. I don't know. It's some kind of chemical that bears hate having like on their face or on their body and they'll just run away. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if you get the SpongeBob reference, but it's like the SpongeBob episode where they spray the little circle. <laughs> No, I didn't. <laughs> oh, my well, God. Please tell me. I don't know. So it's like well, they, they sprayed like a little circle and then they yeah. had to like put on a sombrero hat. And oh, my the, God. Then it keeps the, I don't know if it's, a, it's like a bear something hybrid. Yeah, it's like some bear shark fish. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. SpongeBob. So I'm, how old are you guys? 24. Okay. 22. So I'm about a decade older than you guys. So yeah. SpongeBob was after, like I was like Doug Funny. Carmen San Diego, Rugrats, mm-hmm. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and then like the first beginning of Power Rangers. Like yeah. those were all like the hits that I was about. I, I didn't know, know we had like half of those. Well. Yeah, I, exactly. We had like half of those. <laughs> exactly. But SpongeBob seems kind of trippy. It's kind of like the modern version of like you ever watch Rocco's Modern Life? I know of it. It's yeah. like kind of got some adult themes to it mm-hmm. just like I feel like Spongebob does yeah Spongebob has so. a lot of it. you don't realize it till you see like when I was a kid I haven't watched it since I've been you know 12 or whatever right but um you see the clips from on TikTok Facebook whatever and yeah. you see some of the or you uh, see some of the stuff they mention and you're like oh wow <laughs> like did yeah. not catch that back in the day yeah <laughs> so. yeah you were mentioning a lot of the good um, food and drinks and all that in Toledo. So what's your favorite uh, restaurant here in Toledo? If I'm downtown looking for like a high-end like bar experience, it's Manhattan's. Okay. Manhattan's has great food all the time. If I want like a more bar experience and food, it's the attic. Yep. Um, if I want the best sushi I've ever had, it's Kengo. Yeah. Oh, Kango's fantastic. <laughs> I am excited for that place to be back at it again because it's such a small restaurant mm-hmm. that, you know, it was tough for them to have what they would normally have during COVID because it's just mm-hmm. a small space. It's not, they didn't have room to socially distance that, that many people in there. And they're full so, all the time anyway. All the time. <laughs> all the time. Yeah. So, uh, oh, that's exciting. And, you know, sometimes I want some spaghetti in Spaghetti Warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, hits, it gets the job done. They've got an old school trolley inside of there, which is cool. Yep. So Classic. Yeah, classic. there's a lot of great food downtown. <laughs> there is. Um, outside of downtown, you know, I like Mediterranean food. So, like, uh, the Beirut's cool. Have you been to Sidon uh, right down the street here on Bancroft? I have not been to Sidon yet. Their chicken fajita sub. Is that's the bomb. Very, very hard to be. Excellent. I haven't had a better chicken sub here in Toledo. Dang, I might yeah. have to. It's it's about that, like today. It's about that two minutes great. down the road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't threaten me with a good time. That sounds yeah. fantastic. Side on. I've heard of it. I just haven't been there yet. Yeah. I've lived in Toledo since 2017. Okay. So before that, um, well, immediately before Toledo, I lived in Detroit. Before that, Milwaukee. Before that, Chicago. For that Ann Arbor. Okay. So I've done like a Midwest circuit of uh, cool towns, seen some cool things, get to do a cool thing here in Toledo. Yep. Mm-hmm. So. so after a, a good night out with a few extra beverages, what is your go-to hangover recipe? Recipe? Yep. <laughs> uh, wake and bake. Wake and bake. Uh, uh, we have not heard that one yet. <laughs> usually, it's usually it's hair of the dog or um. No. Or one guy. One guy says he get, went running. Um, you know, no. six miles in the morning. I'm Swing like that. That no. is. Whew. Um, if I'm really hungover, the only thing that's gonna cure me is that. <laughs> like, and you know, maybe then you're feeling good enough to drink that Gatorade. That's <laughs> really gonna make you feel better. Yep. And. Then you get kind of hungry, and then yep. it's like, all right, I'm gonna go to the executive diner and get some breakfast. Yep. Is and that your go to diner? It's close to where I live now, yeah. Um, in the pre COVID days, I lived downtown, and um, Glass City Cafe was a great spot. Mm-hmm. 
they've been closed since COVID. I think they're going to be opening again soon. I was, I was going to ask, because a lot of those um, places, like across from the Heights, what road is that? Um, Summit Street. Summit Street, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A, lot, a lot of those on Summit Street, like across from the Heights and down, are, aren't open right now. There's yeah. There's other bar, is it called Ice or... Ice, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Downtown Johnny's, which I think I mentioned earlier, yeah. um, they had been closed until like two weeks ago. Okay. Um, so, you know, COVID, not only did it cause like no events to happen downtown, but it also caused nobody to work downtown. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, a lot of the economy downtown is from people working downtown. A lot of it's from people visiting and going to events. Um, and neither of those happened. So... I am keeping my fingers crossed that everything is able to open back up. Um, but we'll see. <laughs> you yeah. know, it definitely was not a fun year for uh, for really anybody in the business community downtown. Mm-hmm. Um, the good news is, if you've been downtown lately, it's, it's fun. Yeah, it is. It's happening again. So. Yeah, the past few weeks, I've gone downtown once or twice to... 44 Chevys. Yeah. Uh, Top and Bull for their five, five, for five uh, Mondays. Oh, yeah. I, <laughs> so, definitely used to take advantage of that quite often on Mondays when, mm-hmm. I, when I lived downtown. And it's like, all right, pop into the Cock and Bull, get some food, get for, a bucket of beers, hang out with some friends. Tip like two bu- bucks, seven dollars for five beers. <laughs> I, know, right? I, I remember the first time I we went downtown, she said, we have specials, a bucket for five dollars. I was like, the only place I've ever heard of this is Jed's. You won't, you won't see that deal. I challenge you to find that kind of deal on beer in any other downtown in America. Yeah. I I am like, this is the best. Yep. And yeah, like, it turns Monday into a fun day pretty quick. <laughs> so, uh, that's awesome. Yeah. So do you have any paranormal activities or ghost stories that you've either told or have heard Anything spooky happened on Adam Street? (laughs) You know, I'm sure so many spooky things. I have heard so many ghost stories, whether it's Adam Street, um, the Oliver House. Yeah. uh, That, like, that building housed, I think, like a Civil War hospital at some point. Mm -hmm. Um, So there's stories about, like, ghosts, like soldiers that are ghosts there. And I think there was a show that did some paranormal stuff. I believe all that stuff. I just haven't seen it. I would okay. love to. I think it'd be. I mean, I don't know if I would love to. I think I'd run the other way real quick. But yeah, um, I feel like I ghosts. Think it's cool. Like I feel like ghosts are connected to certain types of people. Cause like, yeah, okay. My brother, like he has all these different types of ghost experiences. Like we have photos of like. There's one where my brother took like a photo of himself like while he was like just you know chilling in bed you know just taking a nice little selfie and there's like this like just ginger kid right behind him just staring what? into the camera and like he'll be uh, another story is like he said that he's been downstairs in the basement you know playing video games like a normal teenager would do and he would just see like we had one of those lights where you like pull down on it's like a little lever and he said he would just start rattling all over the place. And then oh my God. when we were in West Virginia, um, we went through this really big, it's like a tunnel, it's about a half mile tunnel that you ride a bike through, and like, uh, we dared him to go like a halfway, th- or like all the way through and run back for a dollar, and uh, he said he saw some like woman in like a white gown just kind of staring Jeez. at him, he's like, nope. So yeah. <laughs> it's like... I would be terrified. Right. But, like, I've, I've never had anything happen to me. But like, Me neither. Right. So, it's like, I feel like it only happens to certain people. Well, I want to see these aliens that, like, you know, well, I guess they're just confirming UFOs, not right. aliens. Mm-hmm. But I haven't seen any of these UFOs either. Same. Well, there's a... I've been see- trying to find Bigfoot on every hiking trip I go on. <laughs> I haven't found him yet either. You see uh, the footage recently of uh, the, it's like, military footage where, like, some UFO just, like, dipped into the water at ridiculous speeds that yeah 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 it was sick (laughs) (laughs) i don't know what that was no (laughs) that's also always really fun to think about though it is it is i definitely think there's something going on that we don't know we don't understand Mm -hmm. but I i don't know what it is so we kind of talked about some adventurous stuff what's like the most thrill seeking thing you've ever done 
So I'm not a fan, really, of, like, heights, of... So I've been asked to, like, go bungee jumping. Like, would you want to go? No. <laughs> I've been asked to go skydiving. Would you want to go? No. Um, probably the craziest thing I've done, thrill-seeking-wise, is I was on a bachelor party in Tennessee on a riverboat. There was this party cove that, for some reason, had, like, probably a 70-foot cliff that people were jumping off of into the river. You know, I, I'm i a pretty analytical guy. I'm an engineer by background. I'm watching these people jump off this cliff, and they're fine. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to watch, you know, statistically significant amount of these. And all these people are way more drunk than I am, and they're fine. So I did that. Um, and that was super cool terrifying but fun enough that I did it a few times mm-hmm. um but I don't I don't like doing that stuff typically I think I'd probably it's probably in that sweet spot of like six or seven Miller lights deep where <laughs> you'll make some decisions that are a little bit more risky than maybe you would have otherwise but was that overall in, not was that Lake decision. Cumberland I know, yeah, I don't think it was Cumberland. Okay, because I've um, heard I've heard stories of people jumping off like seventy foot cliffs. Yeah, there. yeah, or, that's another one of the big lakes. Okay. Um, I'm blanking on what it was. I don't think it was Cumberland. Okay. There's a couple lakes down there that are kind of near the Tennessee Kentucky line um, that like have really cool like houseboat experiences. Yep. Basically, you just rent out a houseboat. And go out there with, you know, 15 of your buddies or whatever. Um, and, gosh, I feel bad for the people who have to clean those things after 15 bachelors have been living on one for three days. Um, but it's nice if you're ever doing one of those trips. If you got a buddy who's a boat guy, make sure he's with you. Mm-hmm. We had, like, a couple boat guys, and they got us through it, you know. I had no awesome. idea what was going on. <laughs> Some like, of the craziest stories I've heard from my friends have been from some of the lakes in Tennessee on those houseboats. Definitely yeah. cannot mention any of those stories on here. Nope. <laughs> no. no. Uh, there, it's a blast. Yep. Uh, definitely a fun bachelor party spot. Yep. <laughs> for sure. Cool. Nice. Do you have uh, any final things you'd like to say about Handlebar Toledo or anything you'd like to say to kind of wrap everything up? Um. Well, thanks for having me on here, guys, first of all. Uh, it's been cool chatting with you. Getting to know what you're doing here with the podcast. Um, big fan of what you got going on. Um, as far as, you know, wrapping things up, I'd say if you're ready to have fun again, come downtown. You know, whether it's going to a Mud Hens game, whether it's going to a Walleye game when they open up, whether it's just going to a restaurant that you used to go to. Or, best of all, come do a handlebar tour. Mm -hmm. But honestly, just come downtown again. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that the feeling people are getting right now when they're seeing live music again, when they're eating with their friends again, um, it's a good feeling. So embrace it. What is it? Vax and Wax 2021? So (laughs) have some fun this summer. That's a good quote. And, and uh, where can people find you on socials? Um, we are on Facebook at the Handlebar Toledo. On Instagram, we're just at Handlebar Toledo. Um, and then our website is handlebartoledo.com. Um, that's where you can go and get information about what we do and also just book your tour directly online. Um, all it takes is a $39 deposit to book a 16 person party downtown. So nice. come out and have fun with us. Cool. Yeah. All right, Tom, thank you for joining us. Thanks guys. All right. After hours nation, we hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you'd like to stay updated, you can check out our site at afterhourscast.com. Don't forget to tune in next Tuesday morning for our next episode. After hours nation, stay thirsty, my friends. 